Lasso and ridge regression are similar. But there's a big, important difference. We'll talk about it. StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to do part two of our series on regularization. We're going to talk about lasso regression and it's going to be clearly explained. This stat quest follows up on the one on ridge regression, so if you aren't already familiar with that, check it out. Even if you are familiar with ridge regression, you should seriously consider watching, or at least skimming, that stat quest because the examples in this video are based on the ones in that video. Lasso regression is very, very similar to ridge regression, but it has some very, very important differences. To understand those similarities and differences, let's first do a super quick review of ridge regression. In the stat quest on ridge regression, we started out with weight and size measurements from a bunch of mice, and we split the data into two sets. The red dots were training data, and the green dots were testing data. Then we fit a line to the training data using least squares. In other words, we minimized the sum of the squared residuals. When we did this, we saw that even though the line fit the training data really well, that is to say, it had low bias, it did not fit the testing data very well at all, that is to say, it had high variance. Then we fit a line to the data using ridge regression. We minimized the sum of the squared residuals plus lambda times the slope squared. Ridge regression is just least squares plus the ridge regression penalty. The blue ridge regression line did not fit the training data as well as the red least squares line. In other words, ridge regression had more bias than least squares. But in return for that small amount of bias, the ridge regression line had a significant drop in variance. The main idea was that by starting with a slightly worse fit, ridge regression provided better long-term predictions. Bam! Now let's go back to the equation that ridge regression minimizes and focus on the ridge regression penalty. If, instead of squaring the slope, we take the absolute value, then we have lasso regression. Note. Just like with ridge regression, lambda can be any value from zero to positive infinity and is determined using cross-validation. Like ridge regression, lasso regression, the orange line, results in a line with a little bit of bias, but less variance than least squares. Bam! Ridge regression and lasso regression look very similar and they do similar things. In this case, they make our predictions of size less sensitive to this tiny training data set. Both ridge and lasso regression can be applied in the same context, like this situation, where we are using two different diets to predict size. Or in a logistic regression setting where we use weight to predict obesity. And both ridge and lasso regression can be applied to complicated models that combine different types of data. In this case, we've combined the data from the first two examples, weight, which is continuous, and high-fat diet, which is discrete. Just like the ridge regression penalty, the lasso regression penalty contains all of the estimated parameters except for the y-intercept. It's also worth mentioning that when ridge and lasso regression shrink parameters, they don't have to shrink them all equally. For example, if these were the training data and these were the testing data, then when lambda equals zero, we would start with these least squares estimates for the slope and the offset for diet difference. But as we increase the value for lambda, ridge and lasso regression may shrink diet difference a lot more than they shrink the slope. Okay, we've seen how ridge and lasso regression are similar. Now let's talk about the big difference between them. 
To see what makes lasso regression different from ridge regression, let's go back to the two sample training data. And let's focus on what happens when we increase the value for lambda. When lambda equals zero, then the lasso regression line will be the same as the least squares line. As lambda increases in value, the slope gets smaller until the slope equals zero. Bam! The big difference between ridge and lasso regression is that ridge regression can only shrink the slope asymptotically close to zero, while lasso regression can shrink the slope all the way to zero. To appreciate this difference, let's look at a big, huge, crazy equation. The goal of this equation is to predict size. The terms for weight and high-fat diet are both reasonable things to use to predict size. But the astrological sign and the airspeed of a swallow, African or European, are terrible ways to predict size. When we apply ridge regression to this equation, we find the minimal sum of the squared residuals plus the ridge regression penalty. And the larger we make lambda, these parameters might shrink a little bit, and these parameters might shrink a lot, but they will never be equal to zero. In contrast, with lasso regression, when we increase the value for lambda, then these parameters will shrink a little bit, and these parameters will go all the way to zero. And these terms go away. And we're left with a way to predict size that only includes weight and diet and excludes all of the silly stuff. Since lasso regression can exclude useless variables from equations, it is a little better than ridge regression at reducing the variance in models that contain a lot of useless variables. In contrast, ridge regression tends to do a little better when most variables are useful. Double bam! In summary, ridge regression is very similar to lasso regression. And the superficial difference is that ridge regression squares the variables and lasso regression takes the absolute value. But the big difference is that lasso regression can exclude useless variables from equations. This makes the final equation simpler and easier to interpret. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stack quest. If you like this stack quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StackQuest, well, please consider buying one or two of my original songs. Alright, until next time, quest on!